I'm sure. Okay. Maybe some um, groups. Um, first, I'll give you an update on Judy Jones, our secretary or office assistant at headquarters. She had major surgery last fall and is getting along great. She finished her treatments, but she's still kind of recovering and she's tired, tired a lot. So she may not be working the days that we agreed on, but she is working the hours we agreed on. So if you can't get a hold of her, just keep trying. She will get back with you. Um, maybe a little... Uh, We're, <laughs> we're having um, a discussion about insurance here. <laughs> um, Susie gave us a report on membership and I've had um, members ask me, we have 13 affiliated states and 1500 members. So that's good news. Yes. I've, I've appointed um, committees the nominating committee is working and has candidates to present at the conference. The board has worked on bylaws, the board manual. We have the hearth fires have been proofed and finished. The FCL lessons have been proofed and finished. And after today, we will start working on national conference, which will be actual conference is um, August 3rd through 6th, Thursday through Sunday in Florence, Kentucky. We probably will be meeting there for the next three years because we get a price break on using the same hotel and we need that. So I'm going to be using the theme empowering volunteers. For 2023, we'll be celebrating our past. For 2024, we are going to treasure the present. And for 2025, we'll be shaping the future. Um, one committee I've appointed is the future of FCE, and they will be doing a presentation at this conference on some things that we need to be thinking about as we look to the future of what of what might be happening with FCE. Um, yep, that's my five minutes. <laughs> so we have um, teasers for our hearth fires now. I'm not sure, sure who's here, if Linda or... They are here to do those. I'm going to mute myself. Hello, this is Faye Spencer. I'm from Salina, Kansas. I serve as um, National Program Coordinator and I work with Appreciating Generational Differences. This is a unique, as unique as we all are, we still have common experiences and common needs. As time progresses, Generations of people have common experiences that affect how they perceive each other, their understandings, and their needs. As a result, conflicts can arise among groups of people. Looking for ways to prevent or resolve conflicts that may be the result of generational differences. This will be an FCL group process lesson lesson coming to the National Conference in 2023, developed and written by Christine Walker, National FCE Policy, Public Policy Coordinator, and she is the FCL Certified Trainer, and myself as a Program Coordinator. This has been quite an experience to go through and look at the various generations of, our, of ourselves, our children, our grandchildren, and our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and see how they have lived. Good morning, Scott. This is Linda. Linda Hanbury from Picayune, Mississippi. Uh, the program that we're doing is um, healthy, Family meals for a happier, healthier family. When was the last time you heard time for dinner? Mm -hmm. Our breakfast is ready. With this hearth fire, we're going to discover how simple the simple act of eating together greatly benefits you and your children in ways to meet 
the dinner time challenges of everyday life. So hopefully you will join us and be a part of healthy, happy families. Thank you. I, I'm working on this along with Kristen Walker. Emily Gordon. Hi, I'm Emily Gordon from Middle Tennessee. I've worked on music magic along with Linda Hanberry. I am the Nazi public policy coordinator. Music magic will have you tapping your foot as you explore why music is so powerful in our brains. Why music learned years ago is recognized by the aging brain, while something learned yesterday isn't. And why moods are so powerfully affected by music. The lesson uses song title recall, songs with hand motions, and it's gonna end with a seated line dance. Participants will gain insight into music therapy for the aging brain. I look forward to presenting this at the 2023 NAPSI conference. Hope to see you there. Bay, I think you will have to do the ovarian cancer one, the silent killer. Okay. Okay, it's me again. I'm still in Kansas. I haven't moved to Arizona, but Margaret Pullen has been our past national FCE president, and she has developed the Hearthfire series, the silent killer, facts about ovarian cancer. Why has ovarian cancer been known as a silent killer? Because the symptoms of ovarian cancer are thought to develop only after the disease has reached the advanced stages, therefore largely incurable. Because of the presenting symptoms are often mistaken for other benign conditions, especially those that affect the gastro system or the changes to the woman's body as she ages. The myth of ovarian cancer as being a silent killer is fading away. Modern clinicians and primary care providers are recognizing the early signs instead of blowing them off as just gastro problems or nerves. More lives will be saved when the patient and medical practitioner work together. Uh, thank you, Faye. I'm looking to see, I think our next um, thing on the agenda was to do a lightning scavenger hunt. I don't know if Connie's, I have, I've seen her name, but I don't see if she's here. What we'd like you to do is if you found an item, a food item in your kitchen that begins with your first name, just hold it up in the screen so that we can see it. And Connie or I will make comments. I don't know if Connie's still here. Connie's Connie trying, is here. <laughs> Connie, Connie's trying to get on. Bonnie's talking to her as we speak. Uh, Yeah. Okay, Susie has. Uh, Stewed tomatoes. 
stewed tomatoes. Artis has, it looks like a apple. An apple Mary, for A. <laughs> Mary Alice has hmm, something with M. <laughs> Macaroni. Macaroni. <laughs> Linda has lentils. Lentils. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to scroll. I'm, I've got the little bitty picture. So Jane has. Jane has jalapeno jelly. Jalapenos, okay. Patricia has. Oh, there's one I can read. Jeannie has Jello. <laughs> Patricia has pear slices. Pat, a root has raisins. P for pasta. P for pasta. Okay, thank you, Patricia. <laughs> Scott has. Hmm. Can't figure that one out. Sorry. They has Franks. Scott has what? Sausage. Sausage. <laughs> Mary has Marja. Yingling has. I can't read that one either. Some of them are small. I'm not getting. Oh, Debbie has dill. Thank you for writing that on there. That helps. I, what we were what we were thinking of as you got these items is how we. Um, how they get wasted or how we can um, save them. Um, not save them, but how do, how do we keep them from becoming, ending up in the landfill or whatever. Uh, Kathy has a carrot. I'm trying to see if there's any different ones on here. Applesauce. Amy has applesauce. Julie has grape juice. There we go. What do we have in Alaska? I'm not seeing that one. There's a couple of them that are blank screen. So Marlene, did you find something? <laughs> Mustard. Mustard. There you go. Mustard. <laughs> so you can think of all of these food items and how we how they get um, maybe how they how they get wasted or how they end up in the landfill. Um, either they spoil or they or we don't eat all of it or something like that. I'm not giving the lesson. Connie's going to give the lesson. Is she still not on yet or having issues? We didn't really plan for this. Um, Scott, maybe we could do, if she isn't on yet, maybe we could do Kristen's um, commercial for her book. Okay. Are we ready for that maybe? I am. Okay, let's, let's try that and give Connie, a little bit of time. In Alaska. He's in Oregon. He's in Oregon. 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 Here in Oregon. Yeah, and you got Elaine there has uh, eggs. Yeah, I saw the eggs. Now you're muted again, Judy. I missed that one. Thank you. Yeah, she's been waving them there. I thought she might, <laughs> might be throwing them at us. <laughs> I don't think I'm seeing everybody's pictures. There's uh, a couple of black black places and yeah, yeah. And when they, when you get this many on, you have to. There's an arrow over to the right. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. I see that now. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. Uh, show, you want me to show that little video? Yeah. Let's let's see what um, Kristen has to say. This is a fundraiser for FCE, and Kristen will explain it.
there anybody in your family that you're concerned about? <laughs> Any high school students or young adults very poly, and they have a lot of dreams and plans, and you want to give them a boost and help them get on the right track and stay on the right track? I wrote a powerful way for a teenager and a young adult to help them brain to create a mind prepared for their future. I miss for parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles to help children, teenagers understand how really the mind is so they can make the second part of the book is the immune system young adults we got some notes to work at and the part of the science based that is five to Archway Publishing and Okay, we can have Scott mute everyone. I will. I'm going to mute. There's a that's cause that's causing a lot of the feedback. Is there anybody in your family that you're concerned about, or? Do you, are there any high school students or young adults that are in college and they have a lot of dreams and plans and you want to give them a boost and help them get on the right track or stay on the right track? I wrote Living Life Awake for the, the teenager and the young adult to help them use knowledge of the brain to create a mind prepared for their future. This is helpful for parents and grandparents, aunts, uncles to help students, to help children, teenagers understand how really the mind and brain works so they can make decisions that are, are sound. The second part of the book is the immune system for the soul and it is to help for those times that our teenagers, young adults, we are discouraged. Um, the, the second part is faith-based with science support. And the first part about the brain is science-based that is faith-supported. Five dollars of the ebook when you go to Archway Publishing and download the ebook, it's five dollars. 100%, all $5 goes to, to uh, National FCE. If you get the, the book, again, 100% of the pro proceeds, 100% of the profits goes to National FCE. But the information will help take your teenager, take your young adult to places they want to go. Hey, you're going to have to unmute yourself, uh, Judy. Okay. 
So the message from Bonnie is the video isn't working, but she will do it without her video this time. So thank you guys for being patient while we work with this technology. I'm so happy we can do this Zoom so, meeting. So you couldn't see it or you couldn't hear it? Um, the message says we cannot get Connie's video to work. She will do it without the video this time. And then Scott can help her. That's the message. Oh, oh! did we see Kirsten's though? Did Kirsten's video play? Oh, yes, Kirsten's played fine after we muted everybody. I think that was the issue. People weren't muted. So um, yeah, yes. that's part of working with this. So I think we're ready to start Connie's. I'm gonna mute myself. Were we going to do the keeper's corner? Well, if we need more, do we need? I. So I just might just mention too that on Kirsten's, if you need more information, that's on the website on the quick links page. Judy, I think Connie is ready to go whenever you're ready for her. What? All righty, let's go. Um, let's go, Thanks. Connie. <laughs> we'll do the Keeper's Corner promo after her presentation, and there's a couple of other things afterwards. So this, I'm, I'll introduce Connie as a former board member and uh, FCL trainer, I believe. And she came up with this lesson last summer and didn't get to give it at conference because she was ill. So um, we're giving her this opportunity to present it to the members. So, and it, and it will be available for states to pick up to give in their states. All righty, let's. Yeah, I'm waiting for Connie. So Connie, we're not hearing you if you're trying to. I don't see that you're muted. Hello. Just so everyone knows, Connie is talking with Scott right now because evidently she has another issue. So we'll just hold off and see what she wants to do. Or Judy, if you want to start something else, that's up to you. Bonnie, were you going to do the um, Keeper's Corner promo, that fundraiser promo? Maybe you could do that now if you're prepared. I can do that right now. Okay. All right, I'm not going to be spotlighted because Scott's busy doing something else, but I just want you to know that um, many of you may already know, and some of you 
may not know that we at our store in Oregon have donated a booth for National FCE. Oh, I've had really good response from a lot of members. I've, I've received four or five boxes of items, and then we brought a few things home from the conference last year. Um, we started selling the end of July, as soon as we got home from national conference, started selling, and we are averaging about two to $250 a month on the sales. Now, if you think that you have something that you'd like to send us, please remember the weight. You don't want to have to pay more in shipping than the items are worth. We are selling well with jewelry. We're selling well with um, like crocheted or knitted um, dishcloths. Um, hand towels are selling well. We've also sold some scarves, um, hats. One of the things that is happening that I think is, is really good right at this point is some of my vendors and some customers are donating to the booth. Um, and some of that stuff is, is larger furniture and things like that, which is selling. We had a gentleman come in the store and they're good shoppers and they were getting rid of a lot of things out of their home. He um, donated to us a pair of snowshoes that are out of the 30s or early 40s, uh, some skis out of the same era with ski poles, and some ice skates that are actually older than that. I could I I found found online what they were, but he asked us just to divvy it up between our booths that are fundraiser booths. So I put the snowshoes in for National FCE and the um, skis in for our Oregon FCE and the, the um, ice skates. We had a customer come in from Northern California and they bought all of them the same day. I did take an offer on the skis and the snowshoes. So instead of $200, I think we got 160, which isn't really bad for, um, you know, to sell them all in one day. And it, it really helped our, our bottom line for the month. And the, that, um, that check will be coming to, to the national after the 1st of April. So if you have any questions about um, anything that you might want to send, I jokingly told the board when we first got the booth set up that it was getting so full, we would have to get a new booth. And indeed we did. We have um, given up that little tiny one and I've taken for myself and National FCE a huge booth that's really hard to rent. Um, the gal that moved out of it is moving to South Carolina. So it, it made a really good option or opportunity for me to move one of my booths and National FCEs in it. And I will tell you that I think National FCE has about half of the space. So we are selling lots of glassware that was donated to us. And it it's just been a really good good fit, a good fundraiser so far. I know that it's not making us thousands of dollars a month, but I think that the 200 plus dollars a month that it's making is going to make a difference in the long run. Um, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me right now, or if you have anything you want to send, uh, we we did put, I think she put something out in the flash about where to send it, but just co contact me directly and I can send you the information of where to send the items. Uh, it's appreciated if you'll price them. However, um, some of the things that are coming priced, I am raising the price on because I, I know my market a little bit better than you, but it does help if you do price them, at least give me a ballpark park figure 
um, but I can send out a, a, a sheet of paper that shows you how to do the tags if you want to price your own. But anyway, it's it's been a good fit, and I I'm I'm very pleased that we can offer that to National FCE and try to make a difference in National FCE's bottom line. Thank you. Bonnie, all of that information is on the website. Oh, okay. In the forms and everything else like that. It's on the quick links page. Um, also, just tell everybody that uh, it is costing National FCE zero. We don't charge any consignment in our booth rent. Okay. And we thank you for that. Um, when we say that things are free, they actually aren't free. There's usually some hidden hidden cost, and that's the same. There was no charge for this uh, Zoom meeting, but because Scott has the Zoom set up, he doesn't charge us for it. So there's no charge for it, but I can't say that it's free. Somebody's paying for something someplace. Do we have Connie ready yet? Oh, okay, we're going to do this a little different. Okay. She is on, but she can't get her audio to work and she can't get her, she can hear everybody. She can see everybody, but she can't be seen nor heard. So I'm going to put her on speaker phone and we're going to try it. And I'm going to probably have to mute my own speaker. So I'm going to do that in, as soon as she gets going here. Are okay. you ready, Connie? I'm ready. Can you guys hear her? Say something, Connie. Okay. Good, good day, everyone. Can everybody hear her? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, okay. I'm going to have to. Bonnie, you're probably going to have to mute your speaker. Yes. Okay. Does that help? No. Okay. But I am just a minute. Okay. 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 Brian. You might have to mute your speaker, Connie. I. I. I your speaker. I did, and nothing happened. <laughs> okay. I can, I can hear myself. That's why you're getting feedback. Yes. You need to mute the speaker, not the microphone. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. Now I can't see you, and you can't see me, which is probably a good thing, but I will proceed here. Uh, I've been waiting a long time to do this program, and uh, I've, I've worked hard on it. It's been an, an interesting process, and it's almost changed the way that I live my life. Um, this is Food Waste, a World in Crisis. There's people out there in the world who go to the grocery store and buy whatever they want to, whenever they want to. There are people in the world who go to the store and buy only what they can afford. There are people in the world that go to the grocery store and the shelves are empty. There are people in the world who have no store to go to. There are people in the world who dive in dumpsters looking for something to eat. And there are people in the world who let their children eat dirt so they have something in their stomachs. One third of the food produced for human consumption in the world is lost or wasted globally, which amounts to 1.3 billion tons per year. This program will help you to understand the issues and how each person can help to solve the problem of hunger in our world. We will discuss the issues of food waste in our homes, our community, our country, and our world. One of the goals for the Associated Country Women of the World is zero hunger. It's a sustainable development goal, too, is to end hunger, achieve world food security, and improve nutrition, and prompt promote sustainable agriculture. 
while there is food available to feed everyone, many people, including children, still go hungry. Goal number two focuses on addressing inadequate and outdated agricultural processes, food waste, and environmental degradation to ensure that no one goes hungry. We must improve the way we, food is grown now and for the future without causing, de, de, without causing damage to nature. This can be done through supporting small scale and local farmers, providing more funds for the production. I think you're muted. to support our partners around the world by doing our part to reduce food waste. I'd like to share a quote that I use really often. It's a whole bunch of little words. If it is to be, it is up to me. I'm going to share with you some facts uh, from the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization that was uh, printed in October of 2021. One trillion dollars worth of food is wasted every year. Food is damaged as it goes through the supply chain. Edible food is thrown away by real, real retailers and consumers. By reversing this trend, it would preserve enough food to fill feed two billion people, twice the number of undernourished people across the globe. Food waste is one of the largest producers of carbon. Food waste and food loss have significant impact on global warming. When wasted food goes to the landfill, it rots and emits greenhouse gases that damage the environment. Each year, 3 billion tons of greenhouse gases are emitted because of food waste. To put this in perspective, if wasted food were a country, it would be the third largest producer of carbon dioxide in the world after the United States and China. 30 to 40 percent of the food in the United States is wasted. Think about that, 30 to 40 percent. That's more than 20 pounds of food per person for every month. This happens at the production and the supply chain level where food is damaged or spoiled. It also happens in retail level where food is thrown away due to the physical blemishes or because of overbuying. At the consumer level, where people buy more than they need or throw out unused food. Rich countries uh, waste as much as the sub-Saharan Africa produces. America, Europe, and Asia collectively waste 222 million tons of food each year in contrast to countries in the sub-Saharan Africa, they produce 230 million tons of food each year. So we may waste as much food as they produce. Uh, our food systems are exhausting our soil and our water. The amount of water used to produce food that ends wasted, that ends wasted could fill Lake Geneva three times, and the world's arable land with 28% produces food that ends up in trash bins and rather than in hungry stomachs. In uh, 2015, the UN created the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. 
a blueprint for peace and prosperity for the world. In it are 17 goals to reach by the year 2030. Goal number 12 is to ensure sustainable consumption and production of patterns, and that includes eating cutting food waste to half by the year 2030. You know, that's not too far away. Uh, the UN World Food Program uh, produce, helps reduce food lost, loss. Post-harvest food losses often occur because of poor equipment. The UN World Food Program is helping farmers in five key areas, harvesting, drying, thrashing, polarization, or politicized, and storage. Through the airtight storage containers, this can help farmers cut their post-harvest food losses from 42% to fewer than 2%. And another cause of food loss in developing countries is damage and decay during transportation. Inadequate infrastructure can cause delays of delivery, especially in remote areas. The World Food uh, Program is providing cargo bikes that bikes that mostly female farmers can use to increase their access to markets. They, uh, they could build, are building better roads and are boosting access to the markets, which gives many women an opportunity to sell the products that they can use in the, uh, in the third world countries. Each year, the world uses, loses or squanders a third of the food it produces. Globally, around 14% of food pro produced is lost between harvest and retail. The food and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, with some 870 million people, do not have enough to eat. If just one fourth of the lost or wasted food were saved, it could end global hunger. In developing countries, food losses occur in the production chain and hit small farmers the hardest. It is estimated that 30 to 40% of the total production can be lost before it ever reaches the market. In industrialized countries, waste refers to food that has reached the market. That is the waste comes after it reaches the market. In an even bigger picture, whether it's the production loss or retail waste, such squandering reduces the food supply available in the market. This in turn is likely to raise prices, especially in developing countries where consumers cannot afford that such an increase. At the same time, when food is wasted, so are the energy and resources, such as the land and the water that went into growing and producing the food. In a world that needs to double food production in order to meet the demand of a population expected to increase from 7 billion people today to 9 billion people by 2050, this colossal loss of food during the farm to fork production chain is tragic. Overall, this is quite simply a scenario the world can't afford. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about food waste in the different locations where food is wasted. So, uh, food, food waste is a big problem that affects all consumers and how it impacts hunger, food insecurity, food cost, and the environment. By reducing food waste in your own home, you will not only save money, but you will help conserve natural resources like air, soil, water quality, and make a possible impact on food insecurity and hunger. Food waste is defined as edible food that is discarded and goes uneaten. 
It is estimated that 40% of the food grown on farms in the United States will never make it to the table. Food is wasted everywhere from farm to table. And in the United States, most of our food is wasted later in the food supply chain with retailers, restaurants, food service in households like yours and mine. Consumers are the biggest offenders. Wasting approximately 15 to 20% of our food. This includes the half eaten meal left on the plate in a restaurant, food scraps from preparing a meal at home, and the spoiled milk that was poured down the drain. Let's start in our own home. What percent of the food is brought into your home that you that you think is wasted? Now, when I was presenting or preparing this program before a conference last year, I for one week I was very very conscientious of the food that we ate and what I threw out, and. I worked really hard at it to not to waste any food, but I threw out and the one week prior to conference, I threw out less than two cups of food waste. I did have my husband eat the last half of a pancake one day so we wouldn't waste it, but that was just our way of doing it. And that was one particular week, but I have been very conscientious about it. The food that I brought for the registration today was a carrot. And right at this moment, we are getting to the end of our carrot or our carrots from last year's garden. And so I'm really pushing carrots. So we have lots of carrots. Uh, okay, then just a question for each of you in your own mind. Did you throw it anything out up from your refrigerator in the last year? In the last month? How about last week? How many pounds of food would you guess that you throw out every month? This includes what you feed the dog off the table. Edible food means human consumption, consumption only, not what the dog gets. How many unfinished beverages did you throw out? Okay. On average, Americans throw out about 23 pounds of potentially edible food per person per month. Not only is it wasteful, but it's expensive. This waste costs an average family of four as much as $190 a month. And that is 2017 figures, and I'm sure it's a great deal higher than that, the way food costs have gone up. The 90 billion pounds of edible food that is wasted each year in our country costs consumers at least $370 per person. Now, is there any place else that we could use $370? Pound for pound, fruit and vegetables are the most likely foods to be wasted due to spoilage. This does not include inedible portions of fruit like the banana peels or onion skins. Uh, that means that means they don't have regular access. Okay, excuse me, I need to back up. While we are wasting 40% of our food, <laughs> one in six Americans, <laughs> one in five children are food insecure. That means they don't have regular access to enough food for healthy, active lives. For the more than 48 million people in the United <coughs> States who face hunger, putting food on the table every day is a struggle and often means making impossible choices. Food that is thrown away is a missed opportunity to put safe, healthy food on the table for millions of Americans who don't have enough to eat. And I think we probably see people in our own communities who uh, a little bit of something extra would be a benefit to them. Okay, how about the food waste in retail and transportation? Where does the food go in the grocery store that is perishable and getting to the end of its shelf life? Where does the food go that is getting close to the expiration date or 
the best buy date. Some store managers will sell them at reduced prices or donate them to a food pantry or to a community mission. Others choose to put them in the garbage because they don't have any other options. Restaurants often have same, the same difficult choices due to health standards and the lack of ability to store food at the required safety standard. This may be a place where a community member or a group could work with a mission or a Salvation Army who have a food kitchen or where people in need could, be, could get a good meal. What happens when a truck loaded with food is involved in an accident traveling to a delivery? This is a scenario that involves a lot of different people. The first people involved are the transportation owners and the insurance agent, law enforcement and the state food inspector. All of these people need to be satisfied before, a before the food can be declared safe for human consumption. This can be a lengthy project process, but it's necessary. If the food is declared unsafe, it will be taken to a landfill. This was a story that I found very personal to me because my son was working as a state food inspector and he's actually had these things happen where sometimes they could be taken back and repackaged and used or donated to something and other times food just has to be has to go to a landfill which is a big waste. One of the main reasons food is want wasted within the manufacturing process is due what's, to what some researchers refer to as inefficiencies. But we need to consider where these inefficiencies lie and if they are avoidable. For example, on an assembly line producing, producing ready meals, there may be several machines operating to produce the different parts of a meal. If something happens to one of the machines, rather than stop the whole system while the machine is reset, the food keeps coming but is directed to waste. It's more efficient both in terms of money and food resources to lose this food than it is to stop the production for a few minutes. So what is technically inefficient may also be a food and labor efficiency. Another example, a manufacturer produces something associated with a food allergy, like a breakfast cereal that has nuts, and they want to switch the line to producing a cereal without nuts. The produ production line must run for a significant time with the new product before it is actually nut free. There's always food loss associated with machinery startups. And again, sometimes it's dollars rather than, uh, which is more efficient to, uh, to save the dollars, waste the food. I don't know. And then food waste in agriculture. Losses at the farm level are probably about 15 to 35% depending on the industry. Much of the loss in agriculture is weather related, such as droughts, floods, diseases, or other natural disasters. Food loss and waste also amount to a major squandering of resources, including water, land, energy, labor, and capital. But these need, are many times they are needlessly produced greenhouse gases emissions. Emissions. Fruit and vegetables are some of the most perishable products to market due to the short shelf life and often lack of storage. Okay, food waste uh, in landfills produce a th the third largest amount of methane emissions in the United States. 17% after petroleum and animal gas and manure, 20%, according to the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. 
According to the 2018 environmental footprints of beef production of feed is re responsible for only 3.7% of greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. Food takes up more space in landfills than anything else. And I had to stick that in there. I had to give the cows a little bit of a credit. Uh, the number one thing is prevention, preventing food waste. If you don't waste food, then you don't have to worry about landfills. And then where does the food waste come from? Does it come from manufacturing, farms, restaurants, and from our homes? Actually, 43% of food waste comes from our homes. 40% comes from restaurants. 16% is from farms. And 2% is from manufacturing. Food waste in landfills has nearly tripled. In 1960, 12,200 pounds of food waste went to landfills compared to 2020, when 35,280 tons went to landfills. And all of these produce so many of the, uh, the gases that are dangerous and causing the greenhouse issues. The world's food waste could feed 2 billion people. Meanwhile, 25% of the people in developing countries are undernourished. In low-income countries, most food loss happens due to limited harvesting and capabilities of storage or deficiencies in transportation, processing, or infrastructure. In some countries like Tanzania, South East Africa, and Afghan parents are known so much as to sell their children for food. That's a sad thought. Okay. Due to public increased public concerns about the scale of the waste, surplus redistribu redistribution is becoming more common. It is a comparatively new activity and so still somewhat experimental. There are many issues to work out. There's tax policies, regulations, and industry standards might encourage food manufacturers to help feed people with surplus food rather than waste it or send it to anaerobic digestion, which is composting it. Despite this focusing on regulation and policies, it's not enough to ensure that this food can reach mouths. The movement of supply requires a lot of coordination between a whole range of people and organizations. Some grocery stores do donate already outdated but edible food to food banks. Surplus food distribution has a number of other challenges not faced in the commercial system. Those operating in the sur surplus system are generally reliant on unpredictable resources. They often rely on volunteers to fill their food labors, and that is not always a real consistent. We're currently in a situation where there are hungry people in places where food is abundant, but we haven't yet worked out how, we be how best to organize the surplus food distribution system so under what circumstances each method works best. Food is not a waste until it's wasted and all can contribute to moving it along. What can we do as an individuals or groups to lessen the food waste in our own community? Many communities have started programs to provide food for the, for the country and other programs to help the families use food that they receive. Commodities or communities can also work together with school, restaurant, and other food service organizations to donate their leftover food. And there are many different things that I think 
tech communities are working on projects like this to help people and to get it local, but it's a work in process. And it sounds like it takes a lot of effort and a lot of dedication on a lot of people to do this. Uh, as I was working on this lesson, I could see many other things that we could do in our own communities. Each probably has different needs that there are things that we could do to teach our members and to teach our communities on other on things that we can do. Uh, I've thought about things like uh, teaching children, say how to cook safely, how to use what they have things that we can do in our own homes to help, helping people to buy uh, more efficiently and uh, lessons on composting, even composting our food waste rather than just send it to a landfill. The landfill might be easier, but is it the best for our community and for our world? As I've gone through and since I did the lesson, just within the last week, I have come across a couple of things that I found interesting. One was an article in the newspaper last week. It says ways to save on grocery bills. And, you know, don't buy what you don't need. Know what's, know what's in your cupboard. And, you know, this not only would save food, wasting food, it would save us some money. Plan ahead. Buy in bulk when it makes sense. You know, you probably wouldn't want to buy a box of apples if you only needed to make a pie. But uh, you, if you needed to buy paper towels, you could, they will store forever. And then question convenience. Is buying something that is convenient less expensive? Is it something that is uh going to benefit us and is it the healthiest way to do sometimes convenience foods yes it's handy if we are if we're in a rush but uh it may not be the healthiest and it may not be the less least expensive another news item that i saw last week on the uh, on my television news was from the causes of global global hunger, and this was from uh, David Beasley, who was the head or something from the World Food Program, and then he talked about three things that cause hunger, and one is conflict, climate, and COVID. And think about this: the conflict that we have in our world, uh, the the wars and the the hurt that we have in different places in the world and even sometimes in our own country that does cause food hunger climate think about the recent earthquakes in syria and uh, turkey and then COVID. we all know what COVID did to our world and in his program uh, he said 345 million people today are marching towards starvation. And global hunger isn't about the lack of food. Right now, the world produces enough food to nourish every man, woman, and child on this planet. By reducing food waste by just 15%, it would provide enough substance to feed more than 25 million people. Every 43 minutes, Someone in this world dies from hunger. And I guess while I've been talking to you for this little while, someone in the world has died because they were hunger. So that concludes my program. Uh, I'm going to get back on Zoom. If you want to go ahead and have some discussion while I'm getting there, that would be great. I can hear you. I can't talk to you. So anyhow. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Okay, Connie, I've got, I can't turn on my speaker because then we'll get feedback, but I do have, um, I've asked everybody to uh, just write in the comments if they have any questions for you right now. Um, somebody, uh, Judy Palmer wrote in here, National FC did submit a resolution to ACWW on food waste that was accepted. It will be voted on in the triennial in May 
Connie artist Bonnie and and, and worked on the uh, office staff at ACW to get the wording correct. As a member society of ACWW, we will be asking all levels of FC to think about how they can work on this resolution. Connie is giving us lots of ideas. Uh, this it, ideas. Uh, uh, giving us lots of ideas and information. Thanks. And then Kathy M Mack says, excellent program. And Linda says, thank you, Connie. Okay. Okay. And I guess I wanted to add one note here. Um, if, if anyone has any comments for me, you know, I, like I said, once you, I started this program, it has become a way of life for me. Um, if I get ready to bake something, I think, okay, what do I have around here that's getting close to being not good? And that's what I use when I when I fix a meal or when I'm baking something. And so it really has kind of worked, started working on me, and I've become very conscientious of it. And uh, I'm not saying it saved me any money, but it, it's just, it, I find it a very, very important topic. And I think it's something we need to spread around the country. So if anybody wants to get in touch up with me or send me a note, I would appreciate it. I do get my emails. And, uh, you know, I, I would appreciate any comments that anybody had. So, okay. Okay, okay you got a couple more comments came in on there. Uh -huh. uh, artists said and they're coming kind of fast. Thank you very much, Connie. That's from artists. Uh, Jeans and Jean says, thank you, Connie, is really something to think about and give us simple ideas on how we can start. And then Christine Hager says, and I miss, I apologize if I mispronounce anybody's name. Some of the comments are coming pretty fast. Excellent program. I think in the U.S. we underestimate the famine and malnutrition worldwide, plus more community, communities have composting projects. And that's all the comments at this time. Okay. Okay, all right. thank you. All right. So, okay. all right. So I'm going to go I, ahead. Supposed to, I can listen. Okay. All okay. right. I'm going to hang up on okay. you and get my speaker open and turn it back to Judy. Okay. Thank you. You bet. And by the way, I'll have to apologize to everybody. I kept on seeing there for a minute. I thought, hey, I'm speaking. So I muted it for a, a little bit. And that is my fault for getting uh, getting her gone. Uh, when we missed her for a few minutes there. Um, this lesson will be available um, if your state has a license agreement with National FCE. Um, you'll be you would your state can get this lesson to give in your state. Um, I have asked Bonnie and artists to share with us how how did how things we might do or if they have ideas on how we might be using this in the future helping with the food waste and loss so i don't know which one of you i think i had artists down to maybe speak about that and bonnie's maybe going to share about triennial artists do you have something to share Oh, I'm here. <laughs> um, I just have a couple of things. Um, Judy put in the uh, the chat about the resolution that we did write. Um, I want to share a couple of things out of there because I think this is something that as national FCE members, we need to really work on in the next few years. Um, we're going to have to put together some programs some lessons or something so that we can get those out to all of the clubs, members, societies, however. Um, when we put together the resolution, we um, said it be resolved that ACWW facilitates both action and advocacy on the issue of food waste, recognizing that food waste occurs throughout the global food supply chain and that coordinated action is required to mitigate food loss and wastage at every stage. We need to, as individuals, like Connie said, consider ways to reduce food waste in our family and community. As societies, which is our members, our clubs and things like that, we need to put together educational programs, which is what Connie 
um, suggested also. And one of the things that we really need to work on is to raise awareness of the causes of our food waste. There is many things that cause us to have food waste. And I know that um, we're probably not aware of it. Um, and uh, so it, it's just something that I think is going to be evolving. Um, the um, Food and Agricultural Association of the United Nations um, works with ACWW and they advocate for the importance of family farming, which is something that also can be part of um, the um, food waste, um, the loss of how the farming is done, how we get it to the tables. Women's land rights, you know, there are countries out there that um, they have a hard time doing a community garden or anything like that because they don't have the land for it. Also, we have um, indigenous seed protection, food security, and food sovereignty. There are just many things that come into play for food waste that we could do. We'll have to wait and see what um, the World Triennial tells us. I am hoping this is something that is going to be accepted. If you look back in all the resolutions that have been passed since 1947, which are many, there are a lot of them associated with food waste and sovereignty and how to go about it. Um, so it is something we're going to have to just kind of think about. And individually, like Connie said, it's changed how she does things. Um, I need to put that more into practice, but I am getting better, Connie, of not throwing so much away because I just don't buy a lot anymore. <laughs> Um, there are a couple of other things. Um, I don't know if you all know. <clears throat> I am what's considered a ACWW coordinator who kind of works underneath Bonnie, who is our area president for ACWW. But there are two things. Each of the societies were able to nominate a coordinator, and we all work on different things. Um, coming up next is Woman Walk the World, April 29th. You may want to mark that down. But you know, it is not something that you just have to walk. If there are place, you know, a lot of us won't be able to walk yet, I don't think. We have a lot of snow in North Dakota, so I don't know. <laughs> we don't even have sidewalks clear or streets clear to walk on yet. So, but you know, you could take and go to the library, put a globe on the floor pick out a country, and that's how many miles you walk is when you figure out how many miles it is to that you talk about it. How about a knit-a-thon? Some of you like to knit, crochet. How about if you pick a resolution? Like I said, there's a lot of them. This might be a good one here. And you create an activity and do something like that. So you don't always have to walk. But this is a great fundraiser. So when you do this, you either pledge how much you want to do or you collect funds and those get sent to ACWW for the Rural Women in Action. This is a way to um, get funds into our projects that are done worldwide. The other thing is that something that you can do locally that the Southwest um, Association did in Arizona. And that was that they did a rabies clinic based on one of the sustainable goals from ACWW, which is to um, have less rabies in the country. Um, and what you need to do is you have to contact a vet, a humane society or someplace that can hold this and help you work through this. These programs are all on our website, on the National FCE website, um, under Quick Links, I think is where it's at, Scott, isn't it? Well, Believe me, Scott. I've got some pictures um, under state projects, and it's got pictures. Okay. There. So it's, okay. it's on there under state projects. Okay, under state Thank projects. You. Okay. But I think Women Walk the World is underneath ACWW, if I remember right. Yes. Yes. Okay. That is all I have to say. I guess we just all have to stay tuned as to how we're going to work out our 
food waste project. Thank you, artists, and thank you for representing us to ACWW. She's kind of our link between National FCE and ACWW and keeps us up to date on things that are going on. And Bonnie, would you like to share anything about, um, I have down that you're gonna share about Triennial, but whatever you want to. All right, I will. I am actually really excited for this meeting. Um, I can remember back in, gosh, I don't know when they stopped, but we, we used to have mid-year leadership training meetings uh, so you had to fly, you had to get a motel room, and then you were there three or four days for meetings. And I'm, I'm so grateful that we have this wonderful technology that we can have these meetings virtually. I think it keeps us more in touch with each other. And the more we have them, the better we get on technology. I do have a few updates for you concerning ACWW. Um, the world president, Magdi D. Koch, just uh, has put out a letter this morning dealing with the 67th Commission on the Status of Women. Um, there's a couple of her remarks that I would like to read to you. I don't know. Yeah, okay, here we go. Um, she was writing it actually from New York, and she said, this newsletter is intended to share information on ACW's input in negotiations hosting parallel events and the importance of ensuring that governments are held accountable for their commitments. So this is the first time that she's been able to attend a CWC meeting uh, simply because you know what happened with COVID. Um, but the priority theme for this year is innovation and technological change and education in the digital age for achieving gender equality and the empowerment of all women and girls. Part of ACWW's celebration of the International Women's Day on March 8th was hosting an event to emphasize the role of rural women as agents of change. Less talk, more action. Uh, Magdi did an introduction at that meeting and she said that in 2018, the important role of rural women as critical agents in the eradication of poverty was recognized but certain questions come to mind when this topic is being discussed. What does it look like in real life? And what about the social change needed to make this hap happen and become a reality? To what extent does climate change impact on this agenda for development? And how does violence against women impede progress? Addressing these questions and elaborating on the theme, speakers representing a wide spectrum of ACWW membership were included. It was, it was really a wonderful thing that we had a lot of young ACWW members. And by young, I mean under 35, 35 and under. And I'm, I'm grateful that they're including a lot more of the younger voices when it comes time to talk about women's lives. Um, now, I'd like to talk just a bit, little bit about this um, Commission on the Status of Women. If you want to view any of the sessions that ACWW was involved in, you can find those on the ACWW website. That website is acww.uk.org. And when you get to the website, look under our work. There you can find several of the recorded sessions of CWC, and it'll help you gain a, a better understanding of what ACWW does and why it's important that FCE is involved in this program of ACWW. Some of you might not be aware of the fact that um, National FCE, uh, as we're known now, was one of the first organizations in the USA to join ACWW in the 1930s. Uh, we had joined under the original name of National Home Demonstration Clubs. And some of you may, I don't think any of you remember that, but I, some of you may remember the history of that. We have a long history with ACWW. And I'd like to encourage you to go to that website 
Uh, also on the ACWW website under the Our Work tab, you will find a link to resources for members. That area is full of great resources to help you learn and understand a little more about ACWW and our relationship. There's a list of all of the resolutions and recommendations that members have passed since 1947. Those resolutions represent the work members need to accomplish to make the world a better place for all. Now the Triennial Conference is coming up. Actually, I was on the website this morning and it's 50 days and 12 hours and I don't know how many minutes. So it's, it's coming up really quick. I'm excited to attend and to represent you as your area president. It's being held in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. There the delegates will vote on the resolutions that have been, been put forward. And as it's already been mentioned, National FCE does have one that will be, that was accepted as a resolution and will be voted on at the conference. Now, for the good news, did you know you can attend that conference and you don't even have to buy a plane ticket or register for the hotel and everything? You can attend digitally. This is a first for ACWW. Again, you need to go on the ACWW website to register. There is uh, about, I, I haven't done the conversion recently. The last time I did the conversion from pounds to dollars, it will be about $83 for us. Now, so what will you get out of it? Well, in addition to being able to watch all of the conference business sessions, you can watch the opening ceremony that will be held in the presence of His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen of Malaysia. You'll be able to watch the Thanksgiving ceremony and the closing ceremony. There will be video updates and highlights from cultural events and other activities throughout the conference. Now they will mail you a conference pack with a copy of the program and additional information. With your conference pack, you'll receive a, your own badge that says special online participant. Throughout the week, they will post updates, mini videos and photos. You will get PDF recipe cards so you can cook along and enjoy the meals that will be served throughout the conference. And then after the conference, you'll be able to <clears throat> rewatch sessions. They will update the page with photos and other updates, allowing you to catch up on your own time if the time zone is inconvenient or you want to relive some good times. So again, there's a place on the website where you can um, join and go to the, the World Conference. Uh, I don't know how many of you get the newsletter that is posted from um, me, the area newsletter. If you want to receive it individually, I need you to send me an email and you all have my email because I sent out the, pro, um, the link. Send me an email um, telling me that you would like to be able to receive my newsletter and I will forward it on to ACWW so that I can have um, access to your email on my ACWW uh, computer. We have to abide by British law because that's where ACWW is located. And unfortunately they have a really, well, maybe fortunately, they have a really strict um, data protection. So I can't just take your email and start sending you a copy of my newsletter. I need to, to do it through channels so that we don't get violation notices. Anyway, that's all I have. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to speak today, Judy. Thank you. Bonnie, and we're right on time, four minutes. We, we figured this would take 90 minutes and we're very close to that. I, in closing, I just want to remind you that uh, reports are due from states April the 15th, most, most of the reports and the applications for any awards. So I hope you're working on those and we'll get those sent to headquarters. And Judy will make sure that they get sent to the proper 
board members to get judged and thwarted. Um, there is there is one report that's what do I want to say. Very <laughs> there's no like qualifications. I just had a call yesterday about it's it's a history report and it's just a few questions about your club's history. It does say club on it, but um, the lady called and wanted, she was doing a state history. And I said, yes, we will accept state histories too. I think it's important that we collect this history information and not sure what's going to become of it, but we, we do have some at, at headquarters, but we don't have a lot of history about individual clubs. So that's, I was kind of trying to collect the club histories from the different states if people were willing to send it in. Another reason for doing it is in Kansas, we had a couple of clubs that were 100 years old. National FCE is not 100 years old, but we know that our clubs were, were going before states got organized. So I think we had two or three, we had two, and I think there's another one coming up closely. And I, and I found this to be true in other states too, that some of the clubs had longer history than the states have. Um, are there any questions that anyone has? Judy, About I have a comment, and that is uh, both of these sessions will be recorded, or are being recorded, and they will be put on the national website on the conference page when I get to it. Thank you, Scott. And that, that's very helpful if you need to go back and um, hear something again. And I see Christine is leaving. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming. Um, it was a great turnout. Um, and I hope you all learned something. And I hope you are making plans to attend a conference in Florence, Kentucky. I will mention too that uh, we have set the price for conference at $300, hoping that that will be more affordable for people. Um, I will tell you the board, none of the board will receive travel reimbursement unless we have 100 people register and then we will think about it. <laughs> um, Anyway, we did some we did some math and um, figured that we could lower that price since we are more centrally located and hopefully we will have um, more people attending. So thank you again for coming. I don't have anything else.